that there is a certain mythology now that has been given to the Vietnam veteran. So society does not listen to him for 30 or 40 years. We do not want to hear you. We do not want to know your stories. And then all of a sudden, we are going to turn you into a folk hero and a mythological character. And we are very interested in you and your stories now. And so for a person who has gone through 40 years of silence, it is quite disconcerting. And personally, I do not want to be a folk hero. And I don't want to be seen as a folk hero. I want to be seen as an ordinary man. The book took 15 years to actually write. The way I began the book was first to write down short stories of things that happened to me. When we grow up in a society that for 18, 19, 20 years of our lives, we are told that it is not appropriate to kill people. And then we are trained to kill and we go and do that. And it is naive to think that the same person will return. The symptoms of PTSD in the real character, John, that's portrayed in the book is a man who uh, never finds peace. A man who has held on to his war experience so tightly that, that that is his identity. And that is still in some ways in his nightmares fighting that war every night. It was just fascinating to me that that guy had murdered children in his war experience. And this is a man that has a lot of children with a lot of different women. And I don't know whether that was a compensation for what he had done. I think in reality, his drug addiction, which is also a part of a symptom of his PTSD, his neglect of women that he had married, his neglect of himself, all caused a lot of pain. So not only did this sort of backfire on him, it just sort of replicated something that he had done earlier. When I was in the military, I was right next to a man in boot camp who was there because he was given a choice by the judge to either go to jail or go into the Marines. And I think those particular kinds of things are happening now. Kids that are getting in trouble, kids that don't have any future, kids that are living in poverty. These are the people that are being recruited into the military. There is no safe place in Iraq or Afghanistan. You could be in your barracks or in your tent and you are as likely to get a rocket attack or a suicide bomber. Therefore, the level of stress that you deal with on a daily basis is much higher than people that had an opportunity to be at the front lines and then return from the front lines and go into safe zones and you could sleep. So the consistency of stress or the constancy of stress in this, these wars, I believe, is causing a lot of symptoms for those people that may not actually be directly in the line of fire or on the front line. I think the front line is everywhere. <laughs>